Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to our celebration of Easter Sunday 2020, coming to you from Yardley, Pennsylvania. We welcome all of you who are sharing in this worship experience with us, and we've learned in the past few weeks that not only our Yardley Church friends are watching our services, but that you are also sharing the link with your friends and family. And so our services have gone uh, literally around the world to be viewed by a whole variety of people who would never be able to come to our actual worship service in the church. We welcome all of you. It is good to be here together in the spirit of resurrection. Good morning. We have a few announcements to share with you this morning. The first announcement is that organizations that we regularly support with our food donations and our time currently cannot accept these physical donations. However, they can accept and are in need of financial support. Organizations like Grace Cafe, Trenton Area Soup Kitchen, and Bucks County Housing Group can, take, can accept financial support you can find the links to their websites in the church mouse and also on their individual websites. The next announcement that I have is a fun project for you. This project is um, we want to share encouraging words and supportive words with our community during this time. So we want to post signs in the church property for everyone who drives or walks by. So here's what we want you to do. Step one, get a sign. A sign like this you can um, get them on Amazon uh, and then you don't even have to go out to get them they come right to your house once it comes to your house you're ready for step two which is decorate the signs with uh, some uplifting and encouraging message for all to see step three drop it off at the church on the church lawn as soon as possible the last announcement that we have this morning is that we have scheduled two church-wide Zoom gatherings starting this week, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. and Thursdays at 7 p.m. We invite you to log on to Zoom to catch up with church friends, to share your joys, your concerns, your prayer requests, and to support one another. So we hope to see you this week as we kick off church-wide Zoom check-ins Tuesday at 1 p.m. or Thursday at 7 p.m. We hope to see you soon. Let us continue in worship. Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah. Earth and heaven in chorus say, hallelujah. Raise your joys and trust.
Psalms 118 verses 1 and 2 and then 14 through 24. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Then beginning at verse 14, the Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open me to the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Here ends the reading of God. Thanks be to God. climb when you're here for Wednesday God Squad, only now it's become an Easter tree. 
look what miraculously happened. We have Easter bunnies and we have forsythia and we have butterflies and we have little chicks, all signs of new life. And that's the message of Easter Sunday, right? It's the message that there's always hope no matter what happens. There's always love no matter what happens. There's always joy no matter what's happening in the world. So I hope today on Easter Sunday you find a way to enjoy, uh, enjoy life. Uh, go outside if it's a nice day. Uh, open your Easter baskets. Search for some Easter eggs. Tell your family that you love them. Maybe you'll do a Zoom call. Maybe you'll come in and meet us on the church Zoom call, which is today at 9 and at 11 on Easter Sunday. Just know that I miss you, that I can't wait to see you back in this tree again. And I hope you all have a wonderful, happy, happy Easter. Amen. Okay, so now how do I get, how do I get out of this tree? Where are those kids when I need them? Am I there yet? This Easter celebration is not like ones we've known. We pray in isolation, we sing the hymns alone. We're distant from our neighbors, from worship leaders too. to set a festive mood. No gathered choirs are singing, no banners lead the way. O God of love and promise, where's joy this Easter day? With sanctuary empty, may homes become the place. We ponder resurrection and celebrate your grace. Our joy won't come from worship that's in our crowded room. But from the news of women who saw the empty tomb, our joy comes from disciples who ran with haste to see, who heard that Christ is risen and then by grace believed. In all the grief and suffering, may we remember well Christ's suffer crucifixion and face the powers of hell. Each Easter bears the promise, Christ rose the glorious day. Now nothing in creation can keep your love away. We thank you that on Easter your church is blessed to be. A scattered faithful body that's doing ministry. In homes and in the places of help and healing too, we live the Easter message.
by gladly serving you. Will you pray with me? On this Easter morning, we welcome you, Jesus, into our lives. We welcome your resurrection, for it is life-changing, life-giving, and life-sustaining. We welcome the hope it brings to our world. We welcome the joy it brings to our darkness. We welcome the empty tomb, for we know it means that you are on the loose. Lord, may your resurrection give life to those who feel lifeless, those who are just going through the motions, and those who have experienced the death of a loved one. Lord, may your resurrection give hope to those who are stuck in despair, who feel hopeless, and who have given up all hope. Lord, may your resurrection give joy to those who feel no joy. Lord, may you be on the loose in the world as the risen one. We pray for our family, for our friends and our loved ones. We pray for those who are on the front lines of this crisis, O oh God, and ask that you would give them strength and courage for every day and every challenge they face. We thank you for the blessings, the silver lining of time spent at home with our families, where we're seeing uh, families, children, and parents getting closer to one another, where we're learning more about each other than we might have before, where we're getting some fresh air and maybe more sleep. We ask, O oh God, that you also be with those for whom this time at home is a, is a deep hardship, for those who are missing out on their finances from work, uh, for those who have to go to work and put themselves and their family at risk. O oh God, you know the prayers of all our hearts, and we ask, O oh God, that you accept these prayers, the ones that we pray out loud and the ones we're too afraid to speak. Accept these prayers. Guide us and be with us in this Easter season as we remember the joy and the promise of your resurrection. And we offer these prayers in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear this reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, let the words that I speak and the meditations of all our spirits be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, no matter where you find yourself today or what is 
happening in your life, I hope one thing that we all share in common is that we are grateful to be here and we are grateful to be alive. We can celebrate on this Easter Sunday no matter what is happening because now we know how it ends. Now we know on Easter morning there is an empty tomb and a risen Christ and to that all the people together say hallelujah. But the day did not start out that first Easter with gratitude for Mary Magdalene. For many of us, the weeks that have been leading up to our Easter this year uh, have been a time when in the beginning of Lent we were called to uh, think about our personal faith, to add a spiritual practice, to deepen our spiritual practice, to find ways to look for God's presence in our lives. Maybe it was a call we felt to uh, self-reflection or even to self-denial. But since the beginning of Lent, the challenges of sheltering in place, of learning how to do endless Zoom meetings, of retooling the way that we work, how we do all that we do in person but now online, how we keep our distance from our family and our friends, wearing gloves and masks have all become for us a long prayer of strength, a, a new kind of spiritual practice, of you, if you will. And those of you who've been hit even harder because you have to work in the medical profession or you're an essential worker in some other ways, you are the heroes. And this time has been more than a spiritual challenge for you. It has meant facing life and death questions in the flesh every day. I wonder if our current situation dealing with COVID-19 will help us enter the story of the first disciples in that first Easter. And I think maybe that it can. As I said, that first Easter morning was not a day of gratitude for Mary. Very early that morning, she made her way to the tomb of her friend, Jesus. She was probably in no hurry. She knew what she would find there. She would find a body that had been laid to rest and was now ready to be prepared for burial. As she walked, I'm sure she was thinking she could never have predicted that life would turn out like it had. The hours and the days since Jesus died had been a blur for her. She probably couldn't remember whether she'd ate or she'd slept in her deep, deep grief at her loss. It didn't make sense what had happened to Jesus. Everything seemed to be going so well for him and for his disciples. Just a week earlier, they had come into the city of Jerusalem, Jesus riding like some kind of royalty, the people calling out, Hosanna, Hosanna, and waving palm branches. But then this parade of praise had become instead a march to his death. Mary realized that Jesus knew that it had been coming, but she did not, and she couldn't believe what a difference just a few days could make in someone's life. She couldn't believe that things could happen so fast, that life could take such an unexpected twist. Mary remembered what Jesus had said to the disciples during that last meal when he ate together with them. He broke the unleavened bread and passed it around with the wine and he said, this is my body, this is my blood, do this in remembrance of me. He'd known it was their last supper together. He had known that his best friends would betray him and they did. Later that night in the garden, he had asked them to stay awake with him and watch, and they weren't even able to do that simple thing for their friend. Easter morning, Mary was praying as she walked to the tomb that she would not have betrayed him, that she would not have left him alone in his grief. And then came Friday. Mary would never forget the suffering and anguish she had seen on his face, and the sound of his last breath. And now two long nights of grief have passed. It's the third day, and it's time for Mary and the other women to take care of the business of the dead. And so she went to wrap his body and to anoint it with spices. The other Mary joined her on the path, and they continued together 
probably not speaking what was there left for them to say. Everything Jesus promised had fallen by the wayside. All of those beautiful things he had said about bringing in and ushering in the kingdom of God, all those promises had dissolved. There was only endless, hopeless grief. The day was dark and their way forward was unclear. Now we can thank God that this is not how it ends, not in this place of darkness or of confusion or of loneliness or of grief. But we have to admit that we often find ourselves stuck in those places. And surely this pandemic has reminded us once again that it's easy to get trapped in that place where we cannot see the light. As a country, as a world, paralyzed by pandemic, time seems to stand still for us. We forget what day it is, we've lost track, and the days drag on with no known date when things are going to get any better. Tragedy has this effect, and it has this effect not just on us as individuals, but on institutions as well. The church can sometimes get stuck in that feeling of hopelessness and despair. For the first couple of weeks of this pandemic, uh, in our first weeks of shutdown, we were also in shock. And so governments and businesses and schools were also stuck in that place. But how life unfolds can surprise us, and it surprised Mary on that first Sunday morning. Suddenly, as they were walking to the tomb, the ground shook and they stumbled to their knees. Trees toppled off their roots and stones began to roll down the hillside. An angel drifted out of the sky with clothes that flashed like lightning and landed right in front of the cave where Jesus' body lay. The angel rolled that mass of stone away from the entrance of the tomb and then sat down to wait for Mary. The guards at the tomb fainted from fear and Mary was stunned, but the angel spoke to her saying, those words we hear so often in the gospels, those words we need to hear ourselves when we find ourselves in a place of grief or of darkness. The angel said to Mary, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Jesus is not here. He is risen. That must have seemed impossible to Mary. She knew exactly where Jesus' body should be, but the angel invited her to come and see for herself. He isn't here, she realized. Somehow he is alive. And the angel said, go quickly, go quickly and tell the disciples. He has been raised from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. And now Mary feeling alive for the first time in three days ran and she ran crying and laughing and shouting. No one had to tell them to hurry now. This was amazing news. This was awesome news. It was unbelievable news. Everyone needed to hear that Jesus was alive. And so Mary and Mary ran to find the others. In fact, they were running so fast, they almost knocked over Jesus who came to meet them on the path. And on this day of miracles already, it didn't seem impossible that they would actually see him again. They threw themselves at his feet, still not trusting the evidence of their own senses. He is here. He is right here. Praise God. Jesus greeted them, but then right away said, go, go and tell the others. Tell them to go to Galilee and I will see them there. And so the reading from Matthew ends here, but of course the story goes on. The women do go and tell the others and they don't waste any time spreading the news until over the centuries, even up until today, we tell each other once again, he is not here. He is not here in the empty tomb. He's not here in our empty church. He is risen. And not only is he risen, but he has gone ahead of us and he's waiting for us in that place where ministry will happen. 
the place where Jesus told the women and the disciples to meet him, that was in Galilee. It wasn't in a building. He didn't say, go have a meeting to figure out what to do about this. He didn't say, read a book about what you should do or what I'm teaching you. He didn't say, study the idea and come up with a plan. He said, get up and go to Galilee. Galilee was a small town. It wasn't the capital. It wasn't a famous place. It wasn't even an important place. It was just a place where real people lived. Jesus sent his followers to meet him in a place just like where we are, to a place where real people work when they can, whether it's from home or out in the world, a place where real people live, where real people raise their children, where real people right now are shut inside their homes, keeping a safe distance from each other. Galilee is a place where people love and laugh, where people grieve. Galilee is us. It's the place where there isn't always enough money to pay the bills. It's a place where teenagers study hard to get into good colleges. It's where retirees volunteer to make the community a better place. And where, after this pandemic, we will do all of those things once again with joy and thanksgiving. Galilee is where truck drivers and nurses and doctors work long shifts where their families sacrifice for our greater good. Galilee is where some people need food pantries and other people need homes. It's where neighbors care for each other and where people reach out with money and masks and food, even in this crisis. Today's story of the risen Christ, walking and talking with his friends, sending them to meet him in the place of everyday lives is our story and our truth as well. It brings us hope when we have lost hope. It defines a love so powerful that it defies all expectations. It describes an empty tomb that is filled with the promise of all that we could ever ask for. It's the story of being forgiven before you even know to ask for it. Jesus is no longer in the tomb because he's with the disciples in Galilee, right where everybody lives their lives. And today he is right in the middle of wherever we need him, right in the middle of our day-to-day -day lives. He's in the hospital wards, the warehouses, he's on the truckers' routes, he's in the restaurant kitchens, and he's at every keyboard where we sit down to connect to each other. He's listening in on every heartfelt phone call we make to stay connected. He's helping us to share love in virtual space, even if we can't do it safely. And he'll be there when we can share our love and our friendship in real space again, too. No longer does death have the last word. No longer is suffering and pain, even unto death, the final word. Now we have something more to live for. Now we have the promise that there is something beyond what we are able to see or even to understand. The evidence that Christ is alive is all around us if you look for it. It's in the daffodils that bloom from dead looking bulbs. It's in a recovering addict who makes it clean and sober through one more day. It's in people's struggle for justice against all the odds. It's there when warring factions broker a peace when fighting parents come together and make peace at the supper table. Christ is alive when a sick person is cured, and Christ is there with the promise of eternal life if they're not. To be people of faith on this day of resurrection is to believe that life is precious and that we each have another day to be alive, living in the hope of Christ, and sharing that hope with the world. And to that good news, my friends, can I get an amen? Amen. I 
blessing and the benediction. My friends, the resurrected Christ has shown us that nothing is beyond the reach of God, not hardship or even death. Know that we go forth in the spirit of the risen Christ, and in that spirit we bring hope and love and joy to all those around us, no matter where we may be. Go in God's peace. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.